Have you ever lost a father? Experienced extreme family conflicts? Grown up with a fameless family and have been expected to find your place within it? My guest today has. She knows only too well the highs and lows of being in a fameless family. Today, Georgia Smith will join me in this no holds barred shoot interview that promises to leave no subject undiscussed. All that and so much more on today's episode of the Mind, Body and Soul podcast with John Morris. Welcome to the Mind, Body and Soul podcast with John Morris. Inspiring, motivating and educating you in finding balance in the craziness of day-to-day life. Learn from and listen to a man who has a wealth of life experience, from business to bodybuilding, artist to author and has learned to deal with his own physical and mental wellness. But that's not all. Each week, John interviews and picks the minds of special guests from all around the world and from all walks of life. From actors to authors, wrestlers to warriors, business owners to life coaches, and so much more. Welcome to today's episode of the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast with John Morris. Okay, folks, well, welcome to another exciting episode of the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast, where we inspire you, educate you, and motivate you on your journey of finding balance in the day-to-day craziness of day-to-day life. I am your host, as always, John Morris, and today I'm really, really thrilled and excited because my special guest today is a lady of many, many talents, from acting to modeling to appearing on TV and radio shows literally all over the world, and we're really excited that she's given up the time to really be able to do an extended edition, in-depth episode of the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast. She was even a form of synchronized swimmer. It's amazing the stuff that you can find out about things. (laughs) The daughter of the lovely Diana Ha and the late, great professional wrestler, the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. Um, please welcome the lovely, talented, and always exciting, Georgia Smith. Georgia, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm finally on here. So I'm so happy <laughs> to be here. And uh, yeah, a uh, fellow, fellow uh, Great Britain or England or that. Well, I was born in, in England, and the funny thing is, here's, here's the go. funny thing so far. I was born literally 25 minutes away from where your dad was born. So... Well, there you go. See, yeah. little connection. Little connections. So, There's going to be lots of connections tonight, I suppose. Well, tonight for me, <laughs> today for you. Um, Georgia, you know, for the folks that don't know, in your own words, tell them a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do. So um, I live in Tampa, Florida. I did live in England for five years, and um, I worked with iHeart for two years um, since being in Florida, but since the COVID's happened and I have no more studio access and they had to furlough a lot of their staff and employees, I have now taken charge of the British Bulldog brand, and I run pretty much everything, anything Bulldog you want to know or need. I'm your girl. I run it all. I run his website. I run his social media. I run all of his social media pages. I run his merchandise. Um, I do pretty much everything top to bottom, big companies, small companies. I run it all for him. So that's what I've been trying to do since COVID because I was, you know, as we all have been pushed into a corner (laughs) and trying to make something work, deal Um, and what, what we've got. Absolutely. And, you know, for a lot of people, COVID obviously has been life changing. For other people, they've really been able to benefit from it and able to help so many people, such as ourselves. We got taken on this journey that, you know, we never, ever thought that we would end up on, um, you know, which is always really exciting. Um, And obviously the the Bulldog pages in particular are growing massively every single day, which is wonderful to see. It is incredible. And the work that you put into that. I know as someone that's dealing with social media, the work that goes into this folks is not for the weak at heart because you wake up, you're on Instagram, you go to sleep or, or just before you go to sleep, you're on Instagram. Everything is, you know, go, 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 go. But it's really awesome. Um, and, and I'm really just really excited. People will be expecting, I've already had messages saying, are you, are you still awake? You know, because it's late here in Scotland and I'm like, I'm fired up, I'm pumped up for this and we're going to have so much fun. Georgia, first question I've got to ask you, um, because you went through so much at an early age, and we're going to get to that, because this is this is an incredible journey, an incredible story. But the first thing, what was your early life like, and what was it for you that was like dealing and having a famous dad and coming from this famous wrestling family? 
Um, yeah, it was pretty much like all I knew. <laughs> um, I couldn't imagine my life any other way. Um, as I mentioned in an Instagram post, I knew my dad was something special when Mickey Mouse at Disney World, <laughs> Mickey Mouse asked for his autograph. And, uh, you know, I just noticed that he didn't have a normal dad schedule. He was always gone and he didn't look like all the dads at my school. And, yes. uh, you know, he was gone a lot. And, you know, uh, growing up, I never, I didn't really get to see my dad much. So he's, I refer to him as Davey mm -hmm. because that's who what he was known as, you know, it's Davey Boy Smith, Davey Boy Smith. And he'd be home. My mom would call him Davey. So he was always Davey to me. I never called him dad. And when I did, it just didn't <laughs> click. It didn't seem yeah. right. He was always Davey to me. And, uh, you know, growing up, it was a lot of traveling. I think that's why I've got like ear problems because my ears are always popping, All but right. I love traveling. And, you know, um, I had a lot of, it was always exciting, always fun, always traveling, went with my dad to a lot of his, you know, local Florida shows. And when we could, you know, fly to summer slams or WrestleManias or big pay-per-views, we'd go. And uh, he was always a spectacle. You know, people would always, you know, there'd be swarms of people everywhere we went. And, you know, some people would follow him to the bathroom. Yeah. I remember one of the last mall trips. I went with him and there was people waiting outside his stall. Um, so it was a lot of that, but you know, in, you know, my whole duration with my dad, I only remember my dad declining twice uh, autographs. Wow. That's an so incredible he was thing. always, always stopping. Yeah. The, you always. Know, people will laugh and say, oh, you know, that must be a really rare thing. In the interviews that I've done, the interviews I've listened to, it seems to be one of the most commonplace things that fans will go mm -hmm. into the toilet and you, you know, you rest their bean there. Um, I know Jim Ross, good old JR, was, uh, you know, in the middle of doing his business and whatnot, and someone came up and actually asked him for an autograph there and then, and you're thinking, you don't really want me to sign this right now, but that's that's a whole other story. Um, but it, it's, it is commonplace, for, for sure. What were your interests like as a, as a young girl growing up? My interest? Um, so, like, as far back as I can remember, I was like, I wanted to be a Disney princess. <laughs> Oh, but, uh, I'm like Disney princess gone wrong now, but, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, my interests were obviously like my mom put me in dance and ballet. Um, my mom always wanted to keep my brother and I busy with something. And, uh, you know, as a teenager, I kind of, I, I never really was, was really into sports. I never, you know, my mom tried to put me in soccer and I just never, you know, I always liked acting and modeling and I did like dancing. Um, so those were some things that they, that they, um, I was put in and, uh, and it wasn't really good in school. Wasn't very good. Wasn't a scholar. <laughs> we have that in but, common um, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think either of my parents were scholars. My mom like went to university, but, um, you know, but Hey, this makes me, makes me who I am, I guess. I'm just a square peg in a round hole in this world. And there's nothing wrong with that because some of those people end up going on to be the most influential people, obviously, on the face of the planet, which is, you know, incredible. That is very true. So yeah, it, it really is. And every single guest, in fact, that I can think of that has been on the show has said the exact same thing, that they, wow, really? yeah, they, they couldn't wait to get out. And, um, and I can tell you the guests after the show, because folks don't know who we've got yet. Um, but you know, <laughs> they were saying that they literally couldn't get out to wait to get out into the world and actually begin their I life. Wait. Yeah. I mean, for me, I dreaded school. I dreaded school because I wasn't good at it. Yeah. And I didn't know, but I had dyspraxia and other things that were going on. And I'm like, no wonder. Me I too. Just... Oh, do you have it as well? <laughs> well, I've got like, I've got uh, some ADD, like serious ADD. Like wow. I've had that since I can remember. And they prescribed or my guidance counselor said to my mom, like, you need to get your daughter on Ritalin. Right. And I wasn't like hyperactive. Yeah. I just like, just couldn't, it just didn't ever click. Yeah. I just could not. <laughs> I, I, found, <laughs> I don't know if you felt like that. No, no, I, I get that because, you know, for, for me, it takes very specific ways of teaching me in order to get it. Not so much now, but it has to be something that I'm completely invested in. You know, when it was bodybuilding, you I was care about. Yeah, absolutely. But if it's, you know, trigonometry or, you know, some of these other things that you sit there and think mm -hmm. about, I'm like, I've never used it. I don't think a day in my life. So but anyway, we're, we're getting off topic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that because that's what this show's all about. Um, you know, normally we ask folks on this show, and, and I, I don't think I'm probably going to do this with you, but because there was so much to deal with, um, and most people's trials and tribulations come later on in life. For you, a lot of yours came externally 
at a very, very young mm -hmm. age. And in doing my research, and again, like I said to all my guests, stop me if at any point my research is incorrect, um, but I'm going to try and, you know, get it as good as I can. But you had to deal with a lot, of, you know, in your early life. Um, and yeah, I mean, where do we even want to pick up here? The, the one that I was going to pick up was with 1997. And the reason being is mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I'm friendly, I guess you'd say, with both yourself, with other members of the Hart family and so on and so on and so on. So whenever I do these shows, I always try to be as respectful and as, you know, caring as, as possible. But there's one thing that, that has always been apparent to me that in, in doing these shows, if you had to go back in any period in time where you could say in, in a person's life, that this is the moment where everything seemed to have a ripple effect. I believe, mm -hmm. probably with all my heart, and you can obviously you know, tell me different, 1997, particularly for, for, for the Smith family, for the Hart family, was the, the time that it seemed to cause this ripple effect. W would you agree with that? 100%. Okay. Yep, that's when everything like just went down. I'm, gl I'm glad you said that because it means I was, I was at least right on the money and it makes me feel better. So you're, you're correct. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so to, to kind of set the stage for our audience, because they're not necessarily wrestling fans or, or things like that. 1997, um, Bret Hart, world champion. Um, you know, he, he's mm -hmm. renegotiated a deal with WWF. Vince McMahon is literally the king of the castle. He is the, the top dog, the head honcho. And basically throughout this, I think that was 96 actually that he'd signed the deal in 1997. So sort of midway through Vince comes to Brett and says, look, I don't think we can pay you anymore. You know, or, or I don't want to honor, honor, honor this agreement. There's been lots of stories, lots of documentaries and everything that's been written about this specific, specific topic. Yes. And I'm not going to go into it. I encourage you all to check it out if you haven't already, because the story behind it in in a world that's meant to be fictitious is, is as real as real could be. We get to um, an event called the Survivor Series, which happened in uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada uh, in 1997. And uh, basically there was a disagreement between Brett and Vince and Vince was wanting to keep his title and wanting to protect his company. Brett, you know, there was a number of issues that were going on. Some say that Brett, you know, just didn't want to drop the title. Brett himself said it was more of a respect thing with other members of uh, the, the industry, I guess you'd say. The bottom line was uh, at the Survivor Series, Vince did what he felt he needed to do and he got the belt off Brett. Brett leaves the company um, in, I would say, dishonorable uh, circumstances, in heartbreaking things. And, and hopefully at some point, and, and if we could make this happen, this would be wonderful to speak to Brett from more from a, a, a mental point of view uh, where we can, you know, just hopefully find some healing. Because I think there's a lot of people that are still struggling with this to this day. Um, Georgia, I want to ask you as well, because I couldn't find this in my research. When did Davey leave the WWF? In 97 was it straight after the survivor series or was it a week or two afterwards because it was fairly soon afterwards um i don't know like when exactly it had happened i don't think it was right after survivor okay. series right. i think it was like a little time um mm -hmm. after that but um him and brett it was like the same time yeah yeah like going to wcw was the same time yeah um yeah that's what i recall because and, and we should fill in folks that the, the bigger picture in some ways was WCW was one organization and WWE now was WWF yeah. um, were two rival organizations. They're battling head to head. There's a whole messy scenario that's going on. But the ripple effect that Montreal would cause throughout not only your family, but the Hart family, so many mm -hmm. other families going forward is I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it in all honesty. Um, so publicly, um, because out of this event, you know, and, and this is my view and opinion personally, that if I'm not blaming anyone, not putting, you know, not intending to do that at all, but if Brett didn't leave in 1997, if Vince didn't move him on or, and WCW didn't claim him and do all that, I really wonder whether, as we're going to talk about, DV breaks his back. And I wonder more to the point, I know this is bold and it may get me in a lot of trouble, but it's my own view and opinion. I honestly don't believe Owen dies, which is your uncle, Owen dies at the Kemper Arena um, from falling from the ceiling. Um, 
And the, the re there's tons of reasons and things like that, because I think if, if Brett had still been there, there, there would have been, you know, a part where he's saying, oh, and, you know, don't, don't go. And the same with Davey, you, we'll, we'll never know. The reality is um, Owen is left in the WWE by himself. Brett, Jim and Davey go off to WCW. And obviously, as we're going to pick up now from your perspective, what was that like for you? Because you were, what, maybe nine? Uh, yeah, in fact, you would have been nine at that time. So, you know, again, we're going back, um, you know, a, you know a, fair, a fair amount of time um, to the point mm -hmm. you're a young girl and you're like, okay, daddy's now left WWE and he's gone to WCW. What was going through your head at that point? Uh, okay, so who was 97? I was... Yeah, I was 10. So, um, I yeah. Was so, um, <laughs> I didn't really understand. Yeah, you're close. I was like, what was, how old was I? Um, but he, I didn't understand why Davey had to go. Yeah. I knew Brett had had problems. I knew like that was very clear yeah. and very made aware of yeah. that, you know, but, um, I didn't understand why Davey had to go because, you know, everything for the yeah. most part, I mean, I didn't really agree with the, one night only thing yeah but davy davy could have made that into a much bigger mm -hmm. deal than it was but davy was like hey you know i'm leaving anyway yeah i'm getting T paid the same about that for the folks that don't know what happened at, at the one night only pay-per-view which was in birmingham i think it was it was in birmingham yeah so it was uh a little after princess diana died mm -hmm. and uh they did the show and they prior to that they had made the european title yeah for Vince had made it for my dad. Mm -hmm. So um, this match against Davey and uh, Shawn Michaels was at one night only in September, Birmingham, 1997. And from what I was aware of, Davey was supposed to win that match. Yeah. You know, his sister, Tracy, mm -hmm. uh, God yeah. bless, rest her soul. It was her, the anniversary of her death a couple of days ago, but his tw 25, 24 year old sister at the time, she was battling yeah. really bad cancer and she had taken him down to the ring. And it was just a, a really, it could have been a really nice night yeah but uh they changed last minute um davy was going to be losing mm -hmm. the the belt and how the, he lost it if you guys go and look back it was yeah. it was i can't really go back and watch it because it's really it's really um sad and i it find it a very bit disturbing strange. watching yeah. it it was very strange yeah. and i don't really agree with that outcome or how they went about mm -hmm. it or how they handled it and how they treated my dad yeah. But he, my dad, you know, he wasn't, didn't play the victim role or do anything or, you know, woe was me. He was like, all right, I'm just going to go along with it and do it, whatever. And uh, I didn't agree with that. And uh, so I knew that there, and I know my dad didn't make a big deal out of it, but I think it bothered him a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Oh, cool. And I think he kind of, yeah, as anybody, as any human yeah. being would. And I knew there was a, there was that, but, you know, uh, again, I don't know why Davey has to leave, but mm. he left out of loyalty to yeah. Brett. And I think he was made, like there was a bunch of promises and um, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, guarantees? Not requests. Guar not, yeah, there was guarantees and lots of offers. Okay. Offers mm -hmm. for Davey and things that like he couldn't turn down. Right. And like, oh, you know, you're going to make more money. You're going to be home more, this, that. You're, and my dad was like, okay, well, I'm be making a lot more at WCW. Yeah. All around sounds pretty good. And, you know, they, eh, and at that time, you know, my brother and I were really allowed to watch WWF yeah. or E because of, you know, DX and a lot yeah. of stuff was more of adult yeah. programming. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And my dad was like, you know, I don't, it's just, I think it's overall better, a new chapter in our lives and. So that's what we thought. And it turned out to be the complete opposite of that. And no promise or uh, anything was fulfilled. Wow. I mean, uh, so I mean, I was just going to say to, to tell folks as well, you know, um, and I think Sean in particular, referring to Shawn Michaels, you know, has on numerous occasions came out and said, yeah, you know, you know, the, there was elements of things that we did on TV that really affected the generation because my wife and I, you know, we went to school around, around this time when everybody's doing the crotch chop and telling people to suck it and put up the middle finger and whatnot. And that was, I, I, I don't know. And maybe they did. Um, I cannot speak for them, obviously, but maybe they did not know the lengths and the extent that their influence. I don't think actually, it is. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah, would you really sure. want, 
you know, children to be watching this, but their defense was, well, just change the channel. Do you, your son or daughter, struggle with direction, clarity and purpose? Maybe you struggle with anxiety. Maybe you struggle with self-esteem or confidence issues. Maybe you've got great ideas, but you've no idea how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Don't worry, you're not alone. People around the world struggle with these issues. Hi there, I'm John Morris. I'm the coach of the creative mind and I'm also a psychologist in training. For the last two decades, I've worked with people from all walks of life and all over the world, all with a wide variety of issues. I've worked with people from youth groups to adult education to people dealing with day-to-day -day living issues. And each one of them has an amazing story to tell and we've helped them get clear as to where they are and clear as to where they want to be. And I want to help you too. Like a lot of life coaches and therapists that like to drag things on and leave you dangling on the carrot, I want to make sure that each and every single time that we meet and have a life coaching session together, that you never ever leave saying, man, that was a waste of time, or I didn't get the value that I desired. I am committed to making sure that each and every single time we meet, you are one step closer by the time we finish to a goal that you have in mind. So why should you work with me? Well, let me tell you, as I said, I'm committed to making sure that I provide value, that I provide something that's step by step and easy to follow. I'm also a fantastic listener. I've been blessed with the gift of listening and I love to listen to people, their stories, their, their dreams, their desires, because there's nothing more energetic and passionate to me than when a client gets their first desire or they get that goal or they hit that big target or whatever it might be. And also, as the trifecta, I'm committed to you to helping you take action. So whether or not it be deciding on the university you want to go to, deciding on the course that you want to be at, helping you get excited and passionate about your work environment, whatever it might be, I am committed to helping that happen. I'm also committed if you need to shed some pounds, if you need to gain some muscle mass, if you need to, I don't know, develop your self-esteem, I'm committed to helping you take action and following a step-by-step -step plan of action that we can put together. But now, folks, I want to tell you about the Early Bird Special Offer that we are launching right now. It is for 10 people and 10 people alone. That's right, if you are interested in having life coaching sessions with me one-on-one, -on -one, 10 people have the opportunity to do that and we're looking to help these people change their lives completely. We take ages 14 and upwards, so if you're interested in learning how to get from where you are to where you want to be, to de really develop that passion, to live a life that you enjoy as opposed to a life that you wake up and think, ah, oh, you know, how to develop and change your mindset from maybe a negative one to a positive one, understanding what fuels your mindset and understanding what creates the kind of life that you want to live, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. As I say, this is open only for 10 people and once it's done, it's done. So click that box below, get in touch, let's have a conversation backwards and forwards and see if we're a fit for each other and I look forward to working with you. Have an amazing day folks, take care, God bless yeah, and I will see you soon. Yeah, exactly. yeah, a whole other topic. But, in that. Yeah, that's a whole other topic <laughs> yeah. but yeah, and at the same time it's like what they did worked to a yeah. point. Yeah. But I mean, I guess they changing. wanted, you know, it was a bit of dream. Yeah, the world is changing. And um, so, yeah, my dad went to WCW and it just, from the get go, it just didn't really seem right. And yeah. like there was just really no rhyme or reason for how they did things. And they put him in some feuds that made mm -hmm. no sense and yeah. were, I don't know, it just seemed like it was just chaos all the yeah. time. Yeah. And I didn't really, at that, that time, I didn't really like watching it. And like I could see my dad, I don't know like he it's not like he didn't care anymore but like he was just like getting like more out of shape uh -huh. and just it just wasn't like when he was in WWE he was like on point with everything yeah. and then whereas with WCW it was like oh what's going on here and then he broke his back and then it just got you know significantly I, worse yeah I mean touching on that you know again because that's that's you know a major part obviously in your story and in, in, uh, in Harry's story and in, in your whole family story as well to bring up folks to speed, um, uh, George is referring to an event in WCW called War Games, and pretty much two rings are put together. And the final event of the evening is you would have two steel cages, uh, and there would be this big battle. Okay, um, putting it in the simplest form possible. Now, if I've got my information right, and I know this is something that drives probably you insane, so we are expecting a, a reaction in some ways. There was a performer for this particular event called Jim Helwig. Most people know him as the Ultimate Warrior or Warrior. His mm -hmm. 
entrance at that point in this event was set that it would be a trap door. Um, he would come up from a trap door, through the ring, do his business, go back under the ring or go back to the back. But the, the way that under the stage or under the ring stuff usually happens is the wrestler is under the, under, under the ring, they slide out from under the ring, they get in the ring, do the business, then either go back under the ring or go elsewhere. There are no trap doors involved. Why there was a trap door involved in this, I do not know. I may be able to find out at some point with a couple of the guests that are coming up. But the, the main thing is Davey is in a match uh, and basically the ring that he is in uh, is the one with the trap door in. He takes a bump. Now, Georgia, I don't know whether it was the back body drop because I've watched the, the footage over and over and over again in preparation for this. I don't think I've ever watched something so intently um, you know, for, for so many times. But I don't know whether it was the back body drop. I don't know whether it was a bump. I don't know if it was a combination of all three, four, whatever moves. But these are moves that Davey's done time and time again. Um, he lands on the trap door, possibly on the handle. And basically, whether or not that was the point that he broke his back, but he described it as, you know, I, I, I was in so much pain, I nearly messed myself. And that yes. lets you know, folks, that if... Um, if you are in that much pain that you cannot control your bodily functions, there's something seriously that's gone wrong. When did you first find out that, you know, your dad has had this accident? No, was it fall bro or was it war games? Like I can't, I can't pinpoint, like, was it, it was in the autumn time. That yeah. I think happened. it was war games right. in 98. 98. What, what month was that? Oh, good grief. Uh, hang on. Was that September, October? uh it i think it may have actually been point. september uh let's have a look it was in the autumn time yeah uh september yeah. september so, september 13th i yeah. thought yeah that was like september ish yeah so um i didn't watch that match i mean okay. i think i did and but my dad he always you know was always doing moves and like you said it was yeah, yeah. he's always doing things i didn't think anything of it and when he came home like he wasn't he didn't get out of bed for days wow and i remember some days he's like i'd rather somebody push me through my bedroom window uh -huh. just to feel something else oh my goodness so yeah i remember that and i just remember like he just wasn't getting out uh for days but like looking back on it like he should have he should have sued them yeah because that was something that he uh didn't recover from and that shouldn't have happened. But yeah. my dad's attitude with that was like, well, I put my body on the line every time I'm in the ring. Like, you know, you're going to get hurt. You know what you're getting into. It's like, no, but that shouldn't have happened. There's a difference between putting your body on the line in a, in a ring that you know is made of wood as opposed to a ring that's made of wood, but also has a trap door in it. You know, that you don't know about. Exactly. And, you know, and where it is. Yeah. E even if, you know, the referee and, and, Heck, I mean, you, you know, you could lay the blame at anybody's door. Um, and, and I think it's very, it, bottom line is it was a really unfortunate thing that has just, you know, cost someone their health. Mm -hmm. And I agree with yeah. you. I think, you know, people have to stand up and say, look, whether we, you know, whether it was accidental or not, you know, regardless of the situation, you need to be able to stand up and say, look, we, we need to do something to take care of this. What kind of care was accountable. it? Well, that was it. And it is all mm -hmm. about accountability. You know, you need to own your own mistakes. Um, what was, uh, I suppose, was there any care that was given from WCW when your dad's non? Big fat zero. Wow. Nothing. Wow. Nothing. And then he got um, into a lot of pain pills yeah. and morphine to like help um, mm -hmm. with this pain. And then he got like the serious infection in his yeah. back. And why he was on these drugs was to eliminate this pain. Yeah. And then he was put in rehab. And then while he was in rehab, he yeah. got served with his termination papers. I, I know. Uh, and that's something I, was, I do want to talk about. Um, but the, the crazy thing is, you know, like we spoke about in 97, you know, sets out the ripple effect. Brett leaves. Um, Davey's now br basically broken his back. The tragedy for you guys mm -hmm. as, as a whole family doesn't end there because we know in 1999, your uncle, uh, and I still get really emotional even thinking or talking about this, um, he tragically dies from a fall from the ceiling in the Kemper Arena in Kansas City, uh, where basically he was meant to be lowered in. And, you know, whether or not it was, you know, his, he accidentally opened the uh, safety release valve, mm -hmm. whatever it was, the, the, again, the facts are Owen's dead.
And it's, it's a horrible thing to even think about that somebody, again, with so much life, so much stuff that's there. And you think for, for you guys as a family, you know, surely the suffering must be over by now. But obviously, Brett, in I believe in December, I think it was, um, he ends up getting injured by Goldberg. Um, a concussion that basically ends his career and then obviously different side of the family uh, and that'd be for, for a different day um, but you know so much goes on obviously then in the families and things we want to focus let's say on, on yourselves and on Davey and um, I know from my own experience because this year I had the misfortune of tearing my midsection and I know from a pain point of view you know, when you're in severe pain, you're willing to do just about anything to alleviate it, even for a moment and a minute. Um, yes. The pain that Davey was on, obviously, and we're not talking a little bit of pain here, folks. He was just, he was prescribed morphine and morphine is a serious, serious thing. Um, you know, and it originally was prescribed painkillers, then he's prescribed morphine. Um, we talk a lot about the mind and how it operates. And once you're on morphine, it's so difficult to get off of. Your yes, mom, that's what I've heard. Well, well yeah, I, I, but I was going to say your mom from interviews that I've heard and the time that I spent talking to her was probably just going into shock and at the end of her tether because she's like, what do I do here? Um, you know, life is really chaotic. You're what, 12, 13 there. What was mm -hmm. that like? What was home life like for you at that point? Well, going back to like the um, the domino effect it, mm -hmm. prior to Owen, my dad's sister Tracy, mm -hmm. she died November of ninety eight, yeah. mm -hmm. and then his mom died February of ninety nine. Of course, yeah. No, and no, then no, Owen, so like I was just going to say, your dad um, at the point when he'd gone over to visit um, his mom, your gran, before she passed away, I think yeah. your dad was actually off a lot of the the morphine and and yes. other things, and I think it was the shock from that that you know again tra trauma and we talk about this that you know trauma can be one of these things that can literally just floor you and the mind can only take so much trauma before it starts changing us and who we are exactly. uh, sorry sorry georgia i didn't mean to, to cut in there no 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 um no but uh yeah so that that had all happened it was yeah. just like one thing after another and uh i think like once once owen died i just saw kind of like my dad just didn't really have like the fight in him anymore like he obviously like didn't give up he never had like the quitters mentality but he was just just wasn't really the same and you know I'm glad he did go back to WWE 99 but I feel like that could have been pushed back a bit like yeah. I feel like he needed more time mm -hmm. to to you know like we were talking about mind body and soul I yeah. think he had more time to to spend with us and to you know get some real help like you know or talk to a psychiatrist or talk yeah. to you know uh find more about himself yeah. if that makes sense yeah yeah ab because absolutely he had gone through all that trauma physical and mental and you know i think i think he needed he needed a break and was was mentally and physically burnt out but you know my dad wasn't the type to sit her at home and to keep the wrestling was all he knew yeah. you know it was like all his life so when he was at home for the brief couple of months you know after the hospital and owen passed away he was like he didn't know what to do with himself yeah you know he's always at the gym and just always trying to improve and be better and which is great i i but you know i think for him to but when you wa watch him when you look back in 99 he doesn't look like he's got any injuries yeah well, he's well, just taking I mean, all the bumps and really quick and absolutely and and you know he did you know and it was I, one of the things that I never understood was why they put him in jeans. I was just thinking about that there for, for a moment there because his whole attire had changed and all the time I'd grown up with him watching him, he was in the Union Jack colors, you know, it was always that. And then he comes back and he's in jeans and you're like, oh, okay, that, that's different. But again, it was a way to repackage him and try to, you know. Yes, uh, they do, wanted do like some... that aggressive attitude, yeah. tough guy look, and he was a, a heel. So he was like, okay, let's go with it. Absolutely. But the thing is that we should clarify as well, Owen and Davey were really close, you know, and, and like you say, Good friends. yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's, would you go as far to say that they were almost as close as brothers or closer in some ways mm -hmm. than, than brothers? Um, 100%. Like when my dad was in the hospital, Owen came like all the time to see him. I, I he still... was like one of the only members of my family that did. 
I, I still because we watched the the documentary on uh, the um, dark side of the Ri dark side of the ring that Vice TV did a uh, cheap plug for them there, um, and we both just burst into tears. And I still can't believe it. You know, to, to this day, um, how you can have such a connection without knowing someone. Um, it, it's just. Amazing. But I wanted to ask you, Georgia, that you know, go, going back, you know, your dad's broken his back. He's going through all these difficult things. How did this begin to shape you as a person? Because you were what twelve or thirteen years old at this point. Um, how did and I'm assuming you know you was probably starting to feel like I'm really angry with a lot of these things and not knowing how to express them. How did it begin to shape your life going forward? Um, Deep question. <laughs> good question. Like, I there's not really. I don't really have like there like a like a, a definition <laughs> or a perfect answer for that because it was just one thing after another, after another. And then like him and my mom really weren't getting along, yeah. like really weren't. And they, uh, they went, I was just, that was know. actually the next point they were going through a, they actually went through a breakup. Um, they divorced. Yeah. They yeah. Divorced. But prior to that for two, three years, they weren't like, it was just wow. constant. So uh, there was that. And then having to go to school with this of course. and uh, you know, there was, it was a, it was really, really difficult. And I think I have uh, some issues to this mm -hmm. day unresolved. <laughs> I think, you know, yeah. we all need therapy. Uh, I think people, we all have our, our own struggles and problems, but yeah, um, it's definitely, you know, I've got really bad anxiety and mm -hmm. like little things will trigger me. And I'm like, where did it come from? And it's like, it'll be maybe stemmed from something that I saw, but um, you know, I, uh, I had my dad and I, I was really close with my dad and yeah. I was just like, you know, just carry on, just let's go on with it. Let's get on with it. And didn't, it wasn't until he died that it was like, okay. Yeah. That's when it was, I was, you know, mentally gone. <laughs> it, <it's, laughs> Done. And, and it's, you know, completely understandable. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to do a cheap plug now because you mentioned it about anxiety, anxiety. Um, I personally believe comes a lot from fear. It's usually a fear of what could be or what has been. Um, and one of the things that we try to get people to do is to focus on the present. And I know in my own life, um, anxiety, you know, was just the smallest of things stemming from, you know, a, a variety of situations in my own life. So I understand from that point of view, of course, everybody's journey with anxiety is different. Um, but I've got a brand new book out. And Georgia, I think actually I, I need to send you a copy of this. It's called The Battles We yes, All Face. Um, and anxiety is chapter number one <laughs> that's in there. Um, that's and, like, uh, yeah, chapter number one of my life too. <laughs> well, but it is, I mean, it's one of the things I struggle with so much and, uh, you know, just, just playing it out. The short chapters, the easy to, to follow. There's some great artwork that's in there and exclusive to this book as well. And folks, for, for you, we'll, we'll put an add-on at the end of the show, but you can check that out at thebattlesweallface.com. Um, and I think, again, it's going to really help a lot of people because a lot of people are going through the same things that I've gone through it's and great. That, that you've gone through as well, Georgia. Um, you mentioned as well that, um, you know, when your dad passed away and for folks just to bring you up to speed and to keep you on with the journey in 2002, Georgia's 14 years old. Uh, her dad tragically dies in his sleep. He's gone through struggles. He's gone through so much that's gone on. Uh, my wife has lost a father. She lost him when she was 18 years old of uh, a brain tumor. I've lost people that I've been really, really okay. close to in family. How, and, and this is, I, I don't even know if you even know how to phrase this question, but how did you even cope at this point? Or did you, was it literally a case of waking up every morning and being like, okay, well, I'm feeling pretty rubbish right now, but you know, was there any light at the end of the tunnel or, or anything? Cause I know certainly. No, for me, and I was I, talking to, yeah. I was just gonna say for me when I was yeah. going through those things I was like when does this all end mm -hmm. that's Sorry, ex well. you're exactly right like um it was something that like it shouldn't have happened and it happened yeah. so suddenly mm -hmm. and it was like something I didn't believe or yeah. come to terms with to this day it's something that like I still haven't gotten over and I've and I was I was telling this to I did another interview recently and I said like there's so many layers like some days it's like mm -hmm. uh, you peel some days I'm okay yeah. some days I'm pissed off some days I'm mad some days I'm upset some days I just don't want to get out of bed some days I'm just like f, f you to everybody <laughs> yes and I, you know I'll take it out on people and right. like it's just all these different layers and some days I'll be like it's a good day yeah. it's all right but 
you know, every day it's like, or there'll be a new feeling mm -hmm. that like I've never experienced before. And it's like this dwelling anxious. It's just like <laughs> nonstop like that. Yeah. But, um, you know, when we had been through so much and it's like, mm -hmm. you said, like, I thought, okay, it can only get better from yeah. here. It yeah. can only get, you know, we've been like, whew, we were, dear God, like, please, like, okay, yeah. I just hope like we don't have any more problems after this. Like we've, we've had enough, enough. And it didn't really get better. And I feel like a few years, you know, from 2002 to 2005, like it's like a, a blur. A yeah. lot of stuff I don't remember. Yeah. I've yeah. blocked out. I've, I've honestly blanked out. Yeah. And, um, you know, some people can be like, well, you could have had it worse or things could have been worse. Oh, things could have been yeah. worse, but things could have been a lot better. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole thing, I mean, I, I just want to unpack two things that you talked about there. First of all, you know, when, when you're going through severe trauma, like you said, you've gone through all of this stuff, you know, at such a young age as well, you're going through whole body change and everything, which makes it even worse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and for it, it's completely, I, I can't say it's completely normal, <laughs> um, but it's, as, you know, for lack of a better phrase, it's completely normal with what you'd gone through because trauma, you know, really can just force people, like I know when I went through it, I just wanted to sit in my dressing gown and sometimes I would cry mm -hmm. for no reason, um, you know, literally and just uncontrollably because my brain just couldn't take any totally. more stuff that was on. Um, and from what you were describing there, you know, I'm no physician or anything, but it, it's, it's completely understandable. Um, what kind of support did you have around you at this time? Um, you just made me think of one other point. So when <laughs> my dad, that had happened, like you said, like I was in an awkward, you know, mm -hmm. awkward teenage phase, yeah. you know, I was like, I was 14 going on 15. And like, what, during all that time, I had to do my final exams. Oh, of course. And, you know, wow. yeah, it was in the end of the, the year. So I had to do that and trying to focus on that. And then, well, and it wasn't like my dad was a, just a, a regular guy that died. My oh. dad was in the spotlight and he was yeah. a public figure. So you know, our phone's ringing off the hook. He's on the radio about it. Um, newspapers, like some really bad things that people were saying about my dad mm -hmm. and having to go to school and get questioned about it. Yeah. That was really, you know, that shouldn't have happened. And, uh, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't, you know, besides my family, I didn't really have anybody, but looking back, I should have, I should have maybe had seeked therapy or but it's like you're 14 15 years old i don't yeah. know what what i could have done about it and and again you know? with, and it's with like therapy, really... so i was just gonna say with therapy you got to be really careful as well who you open up and talk to exactly that's the danger of totally. it totally that's the danger of it and you know and we weren't really in a financial good financial position it's like you know you just gotta carry on with it but you know like when we're talking about like there'd be some days like you said like i'd just be waking up and just want to die yeah like i didn't it was like yeah. i don't want to be here anymore and you know some days i do feel like that but yeah. um that's it, yeah you know. and, and and it's it's real and it's honest because there's a lot of people uh that have felt the same way i know when i got back from america and things are amazing and my best friend had basically betrayed me for money and put my entire you know life into this bed set and i was sitting there on the bed looking out of this window what i call the cell and if i could have got it open at that point i would not be here now because i would have gone straight through it um you know and and trauma affects us in in very very different ways and like you i just did not want to be here for a long time um and then mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's certainly doing this show. I found a lot of healing and and you know and a lot of other things as well. Um, but but like you say, you know, it, it's something when trauma hits. You know, I don't care how many plans and how many motivational things you've got. You know, it's it's difficult, and we've got to be real here, folks. Um, at what point did things even start to improve for you? Because like you, you said, you know, in two thousand two, you know, obviously your dad passed away. There was a number of incidents and a number of things which we don't have to go into if you don't want. Again, very, very mm -hmm. sensitive and, and, you know, careful uh, because I'm, you know, friendly with, with, with a lot of you. Um, you know, but there was a lot of stuff that's going on, you know, and it, it's coping and dealing with all of that. And um, I, I think for, for me in, in looking at all these things and knowing people the way that I do from, from the outside, all I could say is, you know, People don't make the best decisions when they're hurting, when they're, you know, no. on, on painkillers, on medication, on drink yeah. or, or, or whatever it totally. is, you know, and, yeah. you know, we see things that 
we maybe feel at the time, but we don't necessarily mean. Um, and I don't think a person should be defined because you know, in, in your dad's case, oh, he couldn't get off morphine. Well, he couldn't get off morphine because he had a broken back, you know, and he was in a ton of pain. And I think people forget that. Um, there was a lot of stuff that was going on. Sorry, George, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off on my own, on, on very no, protective no. point of view here. <laughs> but no, no, no. That things maybe started, you know, improving for you. Is there anything that you want to add? Um, and, and I'll show you. Well, like in my, dad's, in my dad's defense, um, you know, leading up to his death, like he wasn't on anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when he died, um, his uh, girlfriend at the time, she, who he, you know, passed away with, she never told, contacted us to tell us what happened. Wow. To this, to the day she died, uh, you know, last January, she never contacted my brother and I to be like, wow. I'm really sorry, this is what's happened. Nothing, nothing. And you wonder for, Nothing. again, not, not to defend actors or anything, but you wonder really what was going through her head because there are folks, and again, that have done this show that have said, oh, people just didn't talk to me because I didn't know, or they didn't know what to say. But no, I, yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. kind of go with you. I, I mean, I'd rather someone told me absolute garbage, but at least communicated with me as opposed to- Or at least just say, I'm sorry, your dad died. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what her reasoning with that was. And, you know, I, I, I and I'm not going to speak ill of the dead no, and, no you know, I don't, I, I'm not going to do that, but, um, you know, that really, um, that really, really pissed me off of and course. it pissed my brother off. And, you know, she, you know, there was things about them in the newspaper, but it's like, she could do that and talk about in the media, but right. she couldn't call his own kids, wow. which I didn't agree with. And, uh -huh. you know, to this day, she kept a lot of his stuff or got rid of it. That's why, you know, with my dad's gear, it means so much to me to actually yeah. find and have it yeah. because I don't have anything of his. Yeah. I don't I mean, know what they, what they did or what she did with it. I have no idea. Um, and, you know, I, we did go to the police about it after he had passed away and the police kind of gave us like some useless advice. Like, well, you know, if he was with her, you don't know what their arrangement was. You need to, you know, from the sounds of it, it's probably long gone, wow. your, your dad's stuff. So that was like the, the great advice. But, you know, me being wh who I am today, if I was, uh, you know, an adult back then, their justice would have been served. Yeah. Things would have been done. Um, and I'm not saying like, you know, do something back. I'm just saying like things would have, questions would have been answered. Yeah. Things yeah. would have been closure. That's all I'm saying. Do, do you and, uh, that, sorry, go on, go on. Oh no. And uh, so yeah, he, so that had happened. And um, you know, I never got a straight answer as to like why he passed away. I heard three different answers, three oh, different no. scenarios. And I was like, what? And, uh, you know, finally uh, talking to my granddad, because he had spoken to people on that end when he passed okay. away, you know, my dad's girlfriend and the friend, at the, my dad's friend at the time. And, you know, I got different answers, but it was never good enough for me. Of I was like, I don't have a clear cut answer as to why my dad died. And my granddad did an investigation on his end. And, um, you know, he got, he got some answers that he wasn't... Um, happy with yeah it wasn't good enough for him it didn't make sense to why his 39 year old son died out of nowhere and he wanted to look into it and he did and uh but you know i i wanted to look into it and uh i did and i contacted all the all, all the investigators all the the coroner who did it and they gave me all the paperwork and i have my dad's autopsy report mm -hmm. And in the report, he was not on anything. Mm -hmm. uh, there was nothing in his system. And it really makes me sad. And, I, and this is, you know, I don't want to, this is kind of personal and private, but I uh, saw uh, my dad had hit in his possession some bipolar medication. Okay. So he was obviously yep. depressed or something. Yeah. Um, so there, but there was nothing, there was like, we cannot rule out or anything you know there was nothing it just seemed like he the damage had been done uh -huh. you know there's nothing in his system there's nothing in his possession he's you know died it just says natural causes he had flu-like symptoms the night before so i think the past you know abuse from you know the, yeah. the from the somas which is a a, a, a really big painkiller yeah. and the year not you can't even buy somas anymore yeah. i looked into um 
so that but it causes really really bad um reaction in yeah. your system and it's long term of term effects yeah. Yeah. and when you are on soma you are prescribed little bits at mm -hmm. a time for a long duration and then you we wine off them like uh -huh. they're it's a it's a very very strong drug and when you look at you know other wrestlers and in, in pro wrestling yeah it's the same pattern mm -hmm. for the most part yeah you know you look at like umaga or you look yeah. at eddie guerrero or you look yeah. at and it's all like out of nowhere and it's like eddie guerrero wasn't doing anything and it's like but unfortunately that did you know when my dad was doing that for i don't know how many number of years the damage had been done and unfortunately i feel like that was the ultimate cause of his early um demise so uh but yeah that was that was really hard to um you know uh look at and do and to um you know i would never wish that upon anybody to go through that process or you know but i, I found the answers that i wanted and um you know i just i i, I wanted answers and yeah. i got them and you know when people are like oh you know he was on drugs or it was this or that it's like people don't know what they're talking about they right. don't know they don't know their facts they don't know they just see um a muscular wrestler who had a drug problems or died early so you know they they like to come up with different yeah answers and you know think that they know everything but they don't and uh, that's fine but you know as i was saying i could you know with my dad with the bipolar he was he was clearly you know going through something mm -hmm. mentally and that made me really sad but um if I, yeah. if, I, if I can share with you, Georgia, and I, and I don't know if I've ever shared with it on this show before, um, I know as a result of PTSD in my own life that I uh, and, and my wife would both suspect that I had, possibly still have, who knows, BPD, which is by um, borderline personality disorder. But that was as a result of the stress, as a result of other things from work and other things and bits and pieces. I understand from, again, from my own understanding, um, you know, if, if you've got whether it's bipolar, whether it's BPD, you know, whatever it is, you want to try and get that damn thing under control <laughs> because it mm -hmm. does affect a lot of things. But what you said there regarding somas and medication, I think that's now the, the reason in 2020 that people are trying to really wise up about what medication they're taking. Because again, yes. similar timeline, similar stories from, from my own journey. I know I was prescribed a medication for colitis. Um, it turns out I was highly allergic to it. I've been putting it for a decade. It affected me to the point that when I was at my worst, it was like split personality syndrome. It was just, it was insane. Some of the stuff that was going on. Um, and obviously that's why I can speak to it and, and obviously do this show. But, um, you know, it, it's, I, I feel so sad in some ways because you get fans of wrestling that are just, I don't want to say they're not educated, but for lack of a better term, you almost think, you know, okay, like you said, you know, big guy, you know, always doing drugs, he's doing steroids, he's doing this, that, and the other. And you forget that there's a person in there that has, you know, real difficulties, real struggles, like all of us. Al mm -hmm. Snow, who's done the mm -hmm. show um, before, we've got part two coming up with Al Snow as well. Um, he was talking about what life is like on the road, and it is constant pressure all the time, every single minute, every single day. Um, and people are doing stuff because they're trying to relax. People are doing stuff because of the pain. People have come, you know, but they forget as well. In your case, you, you know, they forget that Davy Boy has a family. Your mother obviously was really struggling at this point, and she's done documentaries before mm -hmm. that she's talked about things. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't even, uh, yeah, it's, folks, if anything, you know, we, we can hopefully help you realize that people, struggle and and i think you know regardless of what you do for a profession regardless of what goes on when there's families when there's struggles when there's difficulties you know just to be that little bit more respectful and a little bit more educated and wise in your comments and your you know your questions that you put out there because this isn't you know this isn't television this is you know this is real life yeah. i mean you know what was it like on your mom at that point you know for, for what she was going through um to she was she was pretty strong my mom was my mom you know i never really saw her be weak or be um she was always she just i don't know if it's like that heart thing but yeah. she she was like a pretty um uh unbreakable uh yeah. then and like you know i didn't i saw her 
you know, I see my mom cry, you know, sometimes about it. And, um, but, you know, she, she was holding things together and uh, I won't forget that she was just, yeah. just, she just tried to keep us to together and was never, you know, Debbie Downer or trying to look at the negatives yeah. of it. She was just like, you know, this is the the situation. And, um, I suppose as well because she had you two to, she had you two to yeah. and, and look after as well. Exactly. So, um, you know, I don't know if Harry and I were to have been younger, if it would have been any different or if we would have been the age we are now, but, you know, we were like, we were old enough, you know, I was nearly just about 15 and Harry 17. So, you know, we, we know perfectly, we were young, but not that young. We knew exactly what was going on and, uh, we lived through it and, you know, she was just like, we just have each other. And, you know, that's, I think that's what really helped. Yeah. Because I was going to say, you know, how did things or when did things begin to start getting better for you? Um, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, it's always like affected me yeah. in in so many aspects of my life. But, um, you know, I may I think maybe like 2006 was when okay. it was like kind of getting better I think you know Harry once he got signed with WWE and mm-hmm. I'm not saying you know fame money this is like <laughs> oh it's gonna fix everything but it was just kind of like something to look forward to yeah <laughs> um, so that's that was like something like oh yeah he's 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 doing this and he's doing something that you know yeah. Dave you'd be so happy about and um so that that was and then you know the heart dynasty happened and um you know my grandfather's induction happened and it was things were just kind of yeah it, getting it was, get more positive it, it was like the domino effect was now turning in your favor that you know again it started in 97 you've gone through all this horrible situation and now like you say things are starting to turn around and things are starting to happen um and uh, yes exactly it, movement it, well, well that was it and, and sometimes you've just got to weather the storm as as as, as cliche as that sounds, it, it's, you know, I think sometimes the best thing that we could do is just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And sometimes we're like, I have no idea how I get from A to B, but you just keep on going. How did exactly the experiences that you went through um, really shape your mindset going forward? Oh, God. You're going to um, need to lie down after this interview, right? <laughs> I'm going to, so like, you mean the stuff that's happened to me, how it's made me like who I am today yeah, type yeah. of, well, I feel like, and that's, that's a, that's another thing. Um, uh, somebody, it was in one of my Instagram, I did a Q and a, and somebody was like, you know, you're, how do you, how do you, how are you so grounded? They were like, you know, you come from this massive family, you've got a little bit of, you know, fame from this, from that, but you you never come across as like, you're too good or, you're a diva and I and I've done some like um appearances <laughs> funny uh-huh. and uh one guy was like yeah well, he picked my brother and I up and he was like I thought you were gonna have like the dog in the bag and throw your stuff at me and demand things and I was like why would you think that he's like well you're the British Bulldog's daughter wow and I was like oh, no <laughs> so in some and some asked me, they're like how like you're just like a nice person like why how how did this it's, happen it's such a rarity like, in 2020 <laughs> I know I'm like dude just like nice people not exist anymore but um I was just and I and I responded back to them I was like well you know I guess life's just thrown a lot of things at me good and bad and um I just I just you know as as anxious and kind of a scatterbrain and chicken with my head cut off <laughs> type of <laughs> attitude I'm highly like Ooh. but you know I uh I think all those things that have happened to me have made me kind of be like let's not sweat the small stuff here like this, there's bigger things going on, you know, and I try to have that attitude, like, because I, I, you know, we're all hard on ourselves and I feel like, you know, things could be better. This could be happening. This and I'm, it's like, we're all in a bad situation. Like, and I feel like I have to be easier on myself. And, yeah. you know, um, I did filming a couple of days ago and I was like, Oh, I'm going to look back at that and think I'm so fat and so ugly and people are going to comment. And that's like, you just like poured your heart and your soul out. Like if that's what people get out of it, then it's like, God. And it's like, it's not even the case, but I'm just, yeah, yeah. you know, it's females in general, where it's just so how we are. But, but, but it is, I mean, um, for, you know, for a lot of females, like they say, it, it's, it's weight issues. It's how they look for guys. You know, it was certainly for me for a long time in bodybuilding. It was, you know, 
how big the muscles get, how, you know, how much fat can you drop? How, you know, how can you do this? How can you, and the whole thing of body image now, um, you know, that that's, I don't know. I mean, I, I see a lot of people that go through, you know, health issues, whether it be colitis, whether it be physical issues, whatever it is. And they're, you know, they're trying the best and the same, but I'll never look like so-and-so. And I keep saying, it's okay. You look like you, and that's okay mm -hmm. you know, to, to be like that. Um, but we do, I mean, sometimes we, we look in the mirror and we're like, nah. I, I honestly, I don't do it so much now. Um, and I don't know if so much just went on in my head that I was like, ah, does it, does it matter anymore? You know, now in my thirties, I find it easier to put on muscle, but I'm just like, I'm more, I'm more bothered certainly from a colitis point of view of, I just want to stay healthy more than anything else. Exactly. Um, and the, the crazy thing is like you were saying with the small things, we're so busy watching for these big, you know, uh, I know we were laughing because I was watching Indiana Jones the other night. And we were laughing about that. But the giant boulder that comes out in Indiana Jones, we're watching for those, but we sometimes miss the little pebbles that, that are going to trip us up. And uh, sometimes it can be these things. George, I, I've honestly got to say, you know, many people that have been through your uh, journey, through your story, you know, would have given up and called it quits, you know, and just like, I can't deal with this anymore. You kept going. And a lot of people say, oh, wow, that was amazing. That was great. I'm sure and doing the whole mind reading things you're like well in some ways it wasn't an option I just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other you know and that's exactly it it's exactly it people often see us as heroes for going through these things and still being here but I'm like well what's the alternative <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. um but you're able to be such a blessing to so many other people now because of obviously what you've gone through yeah and like if I've made any difference to one person's life or anybody's life like I'm glad you know um I was gonna say something and I forgot <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure it'll come back to me <laughs> no 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 I was like my there was something going on in my head but um uh, that's what I was gonna say is like as much as you know time you know when people are like you know you're getting older time time you don't got time for this you know time is what heals things yeah, yeah. time is what makes things easier and makes time. things better time is what makes um, a friend of mine not want to run over his old boss anymore so there you go time can <laughs> as you say you know time can heal things oh yeah he went through some tra traumatic things that's that's a whole other conversation but it's true you know time and i think acceptance of you know what is because you know i suppose that the question that i've got now is where are you at emotionally with with just where are you, you know with, with everything that's gone on Wow. Well, my, uh, my soul and my heart has pretty much as like a hacky sack. It's been like, boom, 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 you know, been like run over, thrown out, burned, <laughs> sliced up in a million pieces. Uh, you know, and now it's kind of like this, you, it's put back together and it's kind mm -hmm. of looks like, like a horrible rock or something, but it's like, Hey, it's still there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where, where I'm at. And it's like, well, it might not look like yours and it might not be polished and pretty, but it's mine and it's different and it helps me get to A and B. So that's, <laughs> if I, that made any sense. No, it, it did. And I think, you know, again, to remind folks as well, by the way, I've got a really good chapter on this. It's, it's a two-parter, um, you know, and it's called Once Broken, Never the Same and it's yes. true once we go through and, and i liken it to a pencil you know you can break it in half but no matter how much you try gluing it putting it together there is still going to be cracks there are going to be fragments there are going to be all these things uh that, that go on but equally it can still not only be of use but it can be you know something that's of immense value and who knows you know where your journey is going to go through because you're paving your own way now and you're doing your own stuff talk to us a little bit about you. you know so, so, so obviously we've come out the other side of this journey which has been incredible um talk to us about some of the stuff that you've got going on now well right now i've been doing a lot of my dad's stuff but um you know when uh i started my dad's stuff it's just funny that you're asking me that um I started it, I posted it yesterday, actually, weirdly. So last January, not the January 19 was when I started it, but I have, was going through some personal mm -hmm. things and was feeling really low and just was like, I don't know. I just, and when you see that video I did, I can just tell that there was like this sadness yeah. about me. Like there was just like this, I don't know, but I, I can see it and I can see like I, I had lost weight and was just not happy, but I tried to, I was like, you know, what could I do that could, you know, I'm, I'm working, I'm doing this, but what could I do that's going to make me happy? Mm -hmm. 
it's going to give me some fulfillment. What's going to, you know, so I started my dad's page. That day I started my dad's page and it, I didn't have any expectations, didn't think anything was going to happen. You know, I just thought it was just going to be, you know, it might get some followers. <laughs> it might, yes. <laughs> you know, it might, it might get, you know, it's going to just be dedicated to him, be all about him, celebrate him. And, you know, now look at where it's at. Yeah. And uh, that had happened. And then, you know, the Hall of Fame happened. I don't know if that helped nudge mm -hmm. his Hall of Fame uh, induction, but, you know, I, I, I'm I don't, happy for I, that. It certainly didn't help. Oh, it certainly didn't hurt, sorry. Um, <laughs> because, you know, the following the obviously, because you guys just celebrated, what was it, 50,000 likes? Yeah, he's, he's just about 53 today. 53, wow. That's yeah, amazing. so, and, and you know, WWE, true. they knew about the page. Yeah. They had asked me about it. So they, they had known about it and then that had happened. And now he's just got like this thing, this thing, this thing, this mm. thing, this, da, 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 like all these things now happening. And I'm getting so many interviews all the time, mm -hmm. requests from like, you know, uh, Miami Herald and a possible sports illustrated, wow. um, you, um, you know, uh, different sports things in England. It's just been like, boom, 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 boom. I, I get tired of the sound of my own voice sometimes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, people, they want to hear this, the, the story because, and somebody asked me yesterday or two days ago when I did an interview, they're like, so why is your dad's page? Why is that more special? They're like, because we look at these different wrestling tribute pages, but yours is like, it's so unique. And it's so, why is that? Because I run it. That's it. <laughs> As his daughter that runs it. You're going to see from a fan's perspective, from my perspective, and you're going to, and, you know, it doesn't cost people money. It doesn't cost me money. It's just we come together and we share. And, you know, it's this whole bulldog movement. It's Team Davey. Yeah. And, you know, we're all just supporting the same cause. And, uh, yeah, that that had happened. And <clears throat> I'm really grateful for it. And I, uh, uh, the, he's got different projects coming up that I can't talk about yes. right now, but they will be announced. You guys will see. But, you know, it's it's gotten a lot of attention. And I never thought that was going to happen. And people are like, holy, like, you're kind of famous now. And I'm like, no, it's not me. It's my dad. It's my dad here. But, um, you know, I know my dad, he, he'd be very happy. And I think Lord. I hope he'd be proud of what I'm doing. But I think he at the same time be like, Georgia, let's not, let's not forget about you here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I, I get you're doing all this, but like, you know, let's not forget you in this journey. Yeah. So right now I'm like, and I, and that's the thing, like I've pretty much ticked all the boxes of all the accomplishments I wanted for my dad. And why I did it was because I believe that my dad deserves all the recognition, credit, celebrated. Like I think, and all the, the stuff we were talking about, like the sad stuff, I didn't want it to end like that no. where it's, like, I mean, obviously my dad's gone, but it's like, I want to have this be in a positive thing, you know, and I want it to carry on and, and people, people be like, refer to like, oh, it's British Bulldog. Oh yeah, this is what he did. You know, this is, he made, he was a history maker. This guy was an icon. Oh yeah. And look, his daughter's done this and he's, you know, got a hundred thousand followers now or something like, you know, this is really cool. And that's, that's kind of what I wanted. And then when COVID happened and I was going through a, a breakup and that was not fun. And I, again, felt really, really low and not good. And uh, I said to my brother's girlfriend, I was like, I want to do something for my dad again. Like, but I don't know, like, I feel like I can only do so much on his social yeah. media. There's only so much. So I started the website. So on his website, he's got, you know, frequently asked questions. He's got mm -hmm. his stores. And it's crazy because when I wanted to do his store, I was like, but how do I go about it? Because it's just me. Like, how am I going to get like the manufacturers? How am I going to ship things? Like, I didn't know what to do about it. And then lo and behold, I got partnered with a company called Russell Merch. Wow. That's and really they cool. Do yeah. They have fantastic clothes, guys. Yeah. Beanies. Fantastic guys. And they've just started a shirt for me today because uh, I got some I saw requests. It. I saw for... it. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. It's just kind of like for, you know, it's just for fun. But um yeah, so that started, and we've linked that to the store. He's got his pro wrestling tees store. Um, you know, Wrestle Crate UK, they did something. Um, there's a store in Japan, they did something, but I don't know with COVID what's going on with that. But, you know, he's got all these things. And again, like I was like, well, I'm in COVID. I'm not working, and I'm sitting at home doing nothing. 
use the time wisely and take it as an opportunity this time that's what i tried to do and i was like yeah. all right let's just try to get this happening and it took didn't take it wasn't overnight of course. you know and of but it's happened yeah and now i'm like okay now i've done all this stuff and now it's like i just need the hall of fame to happen mm -hmm. but um you know what's next for me you know it's crazy because people are like they they want to see more of me and like my yeah. personality and um they want to hear more mm -hmm. and i'm like okay well i got to figure out what i'm how i'm going to do that um i did have my podcast but, but because of covid the studio oh. i couldn't go into anymore and um i just didn't really want to like half ass it or like yeah. you know i don't know so and also i had my personal things that were going on and you know during covid i'm like i just don't even care right now yeah. Yeah. So, but you know, um, I think I'm, I think and hope that, you know, 2021 will be a good thing for myself and the whole Smith family and, um, Hart family. And yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and that, you know, that's the crazy thing that you and I have been in touch now on and off for probably about two years. We've shared yeah. some happy moments. We've shared some sad moments, you know, and it's, there are always people behind you know everything that's going on and to share in somebody else's journey and to see um the the progression that you've made as well is incredible and and your little secret here folks you're doing the same thing that i'm doing with this show it's called famous by association i figured out if i could get famous people on this show <laughs> that it makes my job a lot easier to reach other people um we've got one guest coming up i'll tell you about this afterwards georgia that literally I think the show is guaranteed between 35,000 and a million views. I'm really excited for one show. I'm really excited. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, but Georgia, is there anything that we haven't covered? You, you take the mic now. Anything that we haven't covered? Of course, we've got to talk about the crazy Instagram messages that you get. That's source of hilarity, but because, you know, that's a homeless way. Oh, you, you can talk about that now if you want. Yeah, let's, well, let's do that. So, so Georgia, how many proposals have you had this week from people off in Afghanistan and Pakistan and India and... Uh, came down everywhere. <laughs> By the way, yes. That's the thing. Is like, if if and when like more stuff comes about me and personality, like I want people to see the humor. Oh, there's lots that's, of it. Yes. Yeah. If you guys follow me on social media, I've got um, you know, once every three four months, I might just do you know, if I'm sitting at home bored, like oh, let's do some Q and A stuff. That was funny. And last you know, night. people, a lot of people really like it, and yeah. they uh, they. It's a great way to interact with you it's a great way to interact and um my dad had poster sorry my, i posted something on my dad's page and i don't i didn't tag me or anything in it but next thing i knew i had like 150 friend requests because my oh, page wow. is private and i was like holy moly and i had re messages uh on in the requests that are like are you the british bulldog's daughter who's your dad how do you yeah. know british bulldog and i'm like okay so i did like hey guys it's davy's daughter yeah this is me and then I had people question, question, question. And I was like, I'm going to just do a Q and A segment and just not get it out of the, and some people might be like, why would you waste your time? Why? It's like, well, I don't care. Like if people want to talk to me, like that's interaction. You know Absolutely. what I mean? I don't, I don't mind. So, and some of them ask really good questions. I do. I, I really love good questions. Yeah. Like what were your, what was your favorite, uh, favorite Disney film? Um, you yeah, know, it, it was like, a good question. Was something that you would, yeah, something that you and your dad like to eat. And yeah. I was like, that's a really good question. And what, uh, what was um, the other one um, that I liked? Uh, your dad's favorite kind of music or something something along those lines. That mm -hmm. It was fantastic. There were some strange ones as well. And then some of them, mm -hmm. some of them you know, some marriage proposals, some like, well, when are we going to date? And they clearly have a wife in their picture or a significant other. And <laughs> somebody like, well, are we going to have kids? Did someone um, ask out your mom as well on one of them? Yeah, somebody asked out my mom. Uh, somebody else asked out my cousin, my little cousin, Shelby. And I was like, I just wrote flat out, no. That's just wrong. Like, that's just wrong. Um, yeah, and then my mom. And I was like, well, I hope you enjoyed my answer to that one. I was like, well, my mom's been with somebody for four years. So sorry to, for the bad news. Burst your oh. bubble there, bud. <laughs> See? Um, yeah, so I, I get I get all sorts, and then that kind of somebody, it was actually a wrestler in WWE. They were like, "Do you have any shirts out?" And I was like, "No." And they're like, "You should do I'm a Georgia Smith guy mm -hmm. shirt." And I was like, "Nobody's gonna buy that." He's like, "I'm gonna buy it." <laughs> so in my in my uh, caption that I posted about the shirts, I'm like, 
this was suggested to me from a friend, you know who you are. And uh, yeah, because when I was posting advertising for it a couple of days ago, people were like, oh, I thought it was out. You just, oh, I thought, oh, I thought it was out already. So when I posted it today, people were like, you made my day, just like some, you know, but I, it's, it's really nice, but you know, it's, it's kind of all, comes together you know the people that ask the questions and you know the, here's a shirt that's one of the things we actually bonded over was the hilarity of some of these really weird messages and marriage proposals that you were getting I and mean, it was just like oh my goodness because and, and it's nice in some ways to know that i mean be thankful you're only getting marriage proposals but it's nice that i'm not the only one that's getting weird to, oh oh that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day that happens by the way in the art business yes um, some really odd people out there, but cool. I've shocked Georgia folks. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, is there no, any? No, um, I get I get all sorts. I get literally people are like, "Oh my god," and I'm like, "Yeah, like this is just kind of an everyday, yeah, weekly yeah. thing." I mean, my wife yeah. and I we laugh about it to be honest with you, um, and it's just like, uh, right, okay, how do you deal with that? Well, you just move on to the next conversation, you know. And, and it's, it may seem really alien to a lot of people, but for us that's in the industry and doing what we're doing, it's actually normal, if, if that's the right word. <laughs> As that's exactly it for me. I'm like, I don't, I'm not really phased by it. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And some people are like, oh, my God, you need to block these people. And I'm like, I don't care. Whatever. I mean, some so, so, some uh, occasions, it's a great source of hilarity. It makes me laugh, you know, and, and that's what I, I mean. if, it's if it's that size, I wouldn't be bragging about it. Mate. But anyway, um, but Georgia, is there anything that you want to uh, touch on that we haven't touched on on today's show? We've covered so much, but th there's so much more to you as well. Which is there's so more to me. There is. I just like, I don't even know like where to start. But, um, you know, all I can say at this moment is, you know, just if you guys want to follow me, my uh, Instagram is at Georgia J Smith. And, you know, you can keep in touch and on the pulse of what I'm doing and seeing, you know, what my next big thing is or what uh, random question I'm going to get next. Um, <laughs> you can follow my dad's page. He's got Instagram. It's at the British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith. I know it's a long name, but that's what was available. And that's his name. And I'm on Twitter at, at Georgia Smith 87. And my dad's uh, Instagram, sorry, uh, Twitter is uh, at underscore Davy Boy Smith. And his Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash Davy Boy Smith. Fantastic. And so, yeah, okay. You know, I and I was just gonna say my, my hope for anybody that's watched this show today is that you know they remember sometimes when we're hurting and going through the valleys of life and difficulties we can all say and do things that break us apart that harm us personally relationally all the kind of stuff um it doesn't mean that that's who we are it just means this is one phase in our life that we maybe need a little bit more support um and to remember mm -hmm. that it is external circumstances it doesn't mean that you're going to be you know buddy buddies and always you know talking to each other um but it does remember it does serve well to remember that you know just because this person is you know one way at one phase in the life it doesn't mean that they are for the rest of their lives um and you know if, if it can bring a family back together through doing this show then that is a really really wonderful thing georgia have you got anything that you want to add just before we wrap up the show today i was gonna say you know guys you know just during this time with everybody just have a little compassion just be a little nice. And I'm not trying to say, you know, the world's not rainbows and unicorns and lollipops, but you know, if there's something that you don't like that you see online, simply unfollow, yeah. simply, you know, but if you're going to go out of your way to be nasty, just remember we're all going through, people are all going through our own battles and struggles, including yourself. Yeah. So, you know, just be a little nicer because, you know, some people, young people or people that are really sensitive or going through things they might take that comment the wrong way or personally yeah, yeah. and i'm just saying just in, in general with social media i mean i get i get all sorts all the time i'm like now i'm just so immune to it that like people are just rude to me all the time <laughs> which is whatever but i'm saying be a little bit nicer yeah because i've seen some people that and it really really hurts them yeah and i hate that so just be just be nice have some compassion absolutely and and i think you know that's something you know that if you get these weird marriage proposals in your case georgie you know you, you've got to you've got to you know give let them down gently and and if people want to send me weird and random pictures please don't um but uh you know it, it's it's been an absolute blast and folks you know like we say come and follow georgia see what she's up to 
you know, continue following the journey as well. Um, I should say as well that the prints that we've got behind us are limited edition. There's going to be an ad up about them because we really want to celebrate. Because again, Davy Boy grew up in Leeds. I grew up in Huddersfield. It's what, 30 minutes away, um, you know, and we want to continue celebrating. And you can check them out at wrestleart.co.uk, which is a brand new plug on it, obviously on this show. Um, but folks as well, if you are interested and you're struggling, you're going through difficulties, do reach out. It's really, really important that you do, you know, because what we're developing a thing called the listening ear at the moment, and it's for anybody. Basically, if you've got anxiety, if you've got struggles, if you, you know, if you've been through these traumatic experiences, like George has described, like I've described in today and in other interviews, you know, reach out because I think we live in a, in a culture where people you know, a little bit nervous about reaching out, but you need to know there is support there. We're dealing with way too many uh, early endings of life and, and from all sorts of chaotic things. And we really want to help. That's what we're doing at Mind, Body and Soul. And, you know, like I say, come and visit us. The reason that we chose the battles we all face is because it literally is, you know, the battles we're all going through, whether it be dealing with COVID, anxiety, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and we do encourage you, you know, to, to come and check it out. Come and check us out at thebattlesweallface.com. And with regards to this show, folks, you know, we're, we're just about out of time, but don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Tell a friend because it may be the very, very thing that really helps them. And if you like, share and subscribe, it helps us as well. And we're really trying to reach as many people as we can and help as many people as we can as well. Um, and yeah, I think that's all we've got to cover. She's been the wonderful Georgia Smith. It's been a delight talking to you, my dear. It's been wonderful. And I hope we get to do it again. I've been your host, John yes. This has been the Mind, Body and Soul podcast, where we help you find balance to the craziness of day-to-day -day life. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you.